World War I was also known as the Great War. The World War, the War of Nations and the War to End All Wars. Not knowing the circumstances of this horrific war, 416,809 Australians enlisted for service. 40% of Australian men aged 18 to 44. Amongst them 15,485 Tasmanians. This all happened 100 years ago. The Great War is slipping beyond living memory. It is up to today's generation to learn about the men and women who served in war and to value their contribution they have made to Australia as a nation. Knowing of the war yesterday helps us to understand today. The Western Front in France and Belgium was the tragic battleground and now it is the site of hundreds of war cemeteries and memorials where our Anzacs lie buried. Private James Martin, 1st Reinforcements, 21st Battalion of Hawthorne, Victoria, born on 3rd of January 1901. Private Martin enlisted on 12th of April 1915, aged 14 years and 3 months perhaps the youngest soldier to serve in the Australian forces. On 25th of October 1915, at the age of 14 years, 7 months, he died of a fever caught in the trenches of Gallipoli. As a 14 year old today, I could not imagine the life of James Martin. I am free to do what I enjoy doing. So many Australians and Tasmanians enlisted in World War I. Most of us today would have a family connection with a soldier. We need to value the contribution of World War I veterans and treasure their stories. Lieutenant Alfred Gaby, 28th Battalion. Heavy fire from Germans covering a gap in the wire, pinned down the Australians. Gaby found a gap in the wire and single-handedly approached an enemy strong point, while machine gun and rifle fire poured from it. He ran along the parapet, emptied his revolver into the garrison, drove the crews from their machine guns and forced 50 of the enemy to surrender. This resulted in the capture of four machine guns. He then reorganised his company and consolidated the objective. Three days later, Gaby was shot by a sniper, killing him instantly. Gaby was awarded the Victoria Cross in recognition of his bravery and leadership in serving our country. After attending the dawn service at Villas Bretina, one of our first stops on Anzac Day was at the Heath Cemetery in France to pay, for me to pay my respects to my uncle, Alfred Gaby, who was a recipient of the Victoria Cross. And it was Anzac Day and it was awful weather. And I think I really got a feel of what he experienced as I stood there and told the rest of the group his story. And I'm so thankful for that experience because after researching his life, I just, it was just so special to be able to give something back and visit his grave and plant a poppy in his memory. So just recently I got the opportunity to go and speak at the 4th Anzac Parade. Before when we did things like history at school, I didn't really retain a lot of the knowledge but once I actually researched about my family and asked my grandmother and my parents about what happened to my family a hundred years ago. I found it interesting and I learned a lot of information that I'll remember and that I can pass on to generations to come so they know about their family history. A student this year in Denmark has given me somehow even more understanding for how it was for the first war, for the veterans of the First World War because they came here to to bombs, to the sound of guns in the middle of the night and they slept in trenches and they were given bully beef to eat every day and I think I really do feel so bad for them because 
It's hard enough being here, away from my family, with so much support. Let alone being so far away from your family, with nothing. Finding direct family links of World War I veterans, Josie and Rose developed an understanding of why it is important to remember the stories and sacrifices of World War I. In contrast, not all young people have had the opportunity to develop personal connections with World War I history. I'm not too sure what happened in World War One, to be honest, but I know that there were many Anzacs that travelled to Gallipoli and lost their lives. Uh, about World War One, I don't know a lot about World War One. I know that uh, there's a fair bit of fighting going on. I guess I'm a really lucky Australian, as I got the experience in 2011 when I won the Frank McDonald Memorial Prize to go to the Western Front and to Gallipoli, where I went interested in war but I didn't know a lot about it and it just entering just opened up this whole new aspect of it for me and I become so interested in it I researched a soldier and I researched two family members which I probably never would have known about if I hadn't nominated myself for the prize if I hadn't done that research through researching the history of World War I, I have developed a greater understanding of the impact and influences that the Great War has had on our life today. Before World War I, Australia had only been a nation for 14 years, and so as a country it did not have a true identity. It was our Anzacs who brought this country together through their qualities of bravery, courage, their spirit, determination and mateship. The war stimulated Australia's economy and the role of women in society also changed forever as they entered the workforce and became more independent. As we approach the centenary of the war years, we need to remember the Anzacs and thank them for the life we have in Australia today. Continuing to pay our respects at Anzac services across Australia ensures that the men and women of World War I will be remembered forever. Georgia Thompson, age 11, spoke at the 4th Anzac service. A prayer of remembrance. Lord God, help us this day to remember the sacrifice of the first Anzacs, Australian and New Zealander, and the generation of men, women and children who have died in the cause of liberty and peace.